Hi, and welcome to another Dex from the Graphic Design School. My name is Leanne, and today I'm going to be taking you through pattern bombing in Photoshop. We'll be creating various patterns in Photoshop and applying the pattern in different colors to the same mock-up. Yeah, I have a hexagonal pattern in five different color variants, and I've used the same pattern on the background. So I'm really liking this pattern on pattern that's happening. Today I'll also take you through using the same mock-up, which I'll give you the link to, I've purchased it through Envato Market, it's a Graphic River um, mock-up. In the same mock-up pack, you will also get a square tin, um, a paper bag, and also a teacup. So there's some really nice things in that um, packaging mock-up pack. I'll be taking you through creating the label on white on the silver can, and then also showing you how to make the silver show through so that your label looks like it's been printed directly onto the silver canister. And then creating a hexagonal pattern, again in the five different colors, and applying it really quickly to the same mock-up and applying the same um, kind of background design using the same pattern that I've used on my packs. I'll be doing a, a dot pattern and then also show you how to color the tins, maybe making them black or white for a completely different look. And then maybe something fun like this, where you can actually color the tins um, in the variant colors. So maybe you've seen this pattern on pattern style that's happening in fashion, stationery, uh, packaging. Um, so here's some inspiration for you. Uh, really lovely to try different patterns um, and different color variants. And it's really easy to do in Photoshop once you know how to create a pattern, define it, and then apply it to whatever work you're doing. So just to recap, we'll be doing a dot pattern, changing the color of the tins, doing a, a zigzag pattern and a hexagonal, exa hexagonal pattern on both silver and on white. I've also created obviously my label and I have my color palette created. Um, so there's my color palette. So you can create your color palette um, using Adobe Color, which looks like that, Adobe Color Themes. So if you have an Apple ID, you can just explore um, and create your own color palette using um, different color uh, palettes and a, a monochromatic triad compound and explore and create your own color palette. Or you can just find color palettes that have been created already and say them and try them. My color palette I've created in Illustrator. So I have it here and my different packs. So I'm gonna take my color palette into Photoshop. I'm just gonna copy that and then go into Photoshop where you'll see my pack that I've downloaded. Um, you'll notice that this label is a little bit short. I really wanted to go from just below the lid to the bottom of the canister. So I'll be showing you just how to manipulate that label on the, on the mock-up. I'm gonna create the color palette quickly. So just go Command New and it should give you a clipboard to the size of your um, colors that you've just copied. It doesn't matter if you copy them as smart out objects or pixels, they are my colors. I'm just gonna open up my swatches. You might notice some of the similar colors there already because I have been working with this color palette already. And then just take your eyedropper tool and we're just going to click through and as I click through you'll notice they get saved to the swatches straight away. So there's my blueberry, my basil, my mint and lemonade, my lavender and my strawberry flavor. So they saved into my swatches, I don't need to save this document. There you go. So back to my mock-up. If you open up your mock-up layers you'll see there's the label and my tea caddy and my shadow. I'm going to be duplicating this particular mock-up to create five in a row. So I want to drag my shadow into my tea caddy. So ultimately I want everything in one um, folder. So I'm going to drag my shadow down to the bottom so that it's sitting underneath, but it's still sitting in my tea caddy um, folder. Now I don't really want this whole label folder, but I do want the white um, label. So I'm just going to take that label which is sitting over there underneath label and drag it into my tea caddy and then select my label and delete it. 
So my label is now sitting in T Caddy. I want to just extend it so it's sitting um, a little bit higher and lower on my Caddy. So go edit, transform, scale. And I'm just going to scale it up and scale it down at the bottom. Now what you want to do is just check that the warping looks correct on the four corners. So I'm going to go edit, whoops, edit, transform, warp, zoom in a little bit and just make sure that it's sitting nicely in the corners so that any patterning that happens doesn't look too strange as it warps around the corners and around the edges. And just go okay, great. So there I have my label. The next thing I'm going to do is create my pattern that I'm going to apply to my packaging. The way we do this is to create a perfectly a perfect square. So go Command New. I normally do a 200 by 200. Document 300 pixels per inch. So it's a nice high resolution because I might be using it on some printed material later down the line. And just do it RGB for now, white background, and go create. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Create a new layer, and then go to your shapes, shapes, custom shape tool. Click on that. Go to custom shape tool right at the bottom, um, and click on your top panel, and you'll see all the shapes there. Now, what I'm looking for to create my hexagonal is my triangle, which is over there. Now, if you don't see all these shapes when you open up this um, drop down, just go to the cog on the right, click on that, and go all, and you should see all the shapes. So there I have my triangle. Select that, go onto your screen. I can just click onto my uh, document and it should give me a custom shape option here. So I can just put in 200 by 200, or you can draw it manually. There you go. Oh, it's giving me my color already my strawberry color. So just position it so it's centered. You can see my smart guides have switched on, so it's there. I want to drag this top point across to the right to create the hexagonal. So again, go edit, transform, distort, click on that middle point, hold down shift, and just drag it across to the right until it clicks into the corner, and go enter. I'm gonna switch off my background, or delete it, because I want the transparent background to show through in whatever pattern I'm doing. Just in case my tin is colored or my label is colored, I want the, the background to show through. I'm gonna save this. When you create your patterns, you're gonna create them all in one document and you can save this document and just keep creating new layers with new patterns. And it's a really easy go-to document where you can just go into same patterns, change colors, change them slightly, and then define your pattern. So I'm just gonna save that and call it pattern. There you go. Now to define your pattern, you're gonna go edit, define pattern, and I'm gonna call this strawberry hex. What you call your pattern doesn't really matter at this stage. You can call it anything. It gets saved into your pattern um, library. So I go okay, and there it's been saved. So I can go to my um, packaging now, and I want to apply the pattern to my label. So here where you see your content, I'm going to open that, switch it on. I'm going to drag my label down just behind it. And then double click on that. We obviously don't need your design, so select or delete that. Go to layer, new layer fill, pattern. It should fill with my last pattern that I created, which is my strawberry. That's obviously way too big. I'm going to go 16%. You can play around with the pattern that you create, but I like to make sure that the top part of the pattern and the bottom fits in nicely. So you don't want to see the pattern breaking up anywhere and go OK. Now make sure you come on, save, file, save, and then you can go to your um, label and there you go. We have our label on our packaging. I'm going to bring my label in now from Illustrator. So because I've been doing um, these labels for a while, they are in my library. Um, but I'll just copy it again. Make sure you have the whole label. I have a white background on my label. Come on, C, go to my pack, 
go to your smart layer, double click on that and Command-V to paste it. Paste it as smart object. It will go into your library and into that. Now I'm going to place it um, and make sure that it works well with my pattern. Now I know that I need to scale this label down slightly so that it fits better within my pattern. So we're just going to go edit, transform, scale. I'm just going to take it down 98%. I want to be exact so that when I bring in my other labels, I do exactly the same to them. So it's still, it's looking like it's cutting off over there. So I'm just going to move it up just a little bit. Perfect. And go Command Save. And then when you go to your pack, There's your label. Now the next thing I want to do is um, duplicate this. So I have my pack um, created, but I want to have five packs in a row with the various colors. I'm just going to zoom back a little bit. There we go. So I have my tea caddy in one folder. Everything that I need for one pack is in that folder. So I'm going to call that tea caddy center because that one will be right in the center. I know I'm going to need a little bit more width for this document so go to image canvas size I'm going to change that to 120 and just give it a little bit more height go okay go to your background select all and oh <laughs> fill it with your white And there's your tea caddy. I'm just going to lift it a little bit higher. So it's a little bit more centered. Great. I'm going to take the whole tea caddy folder and copy that. And drag it off to the left. So there's my second one. I'm going to call that tea caddy 2. Because it will be the second one from the left. And then I'm going to take that one and drag it across and just line it up. I'm going to call that T caddy 4 because that will be number 4 in a row. I want my, um, I accidentally copied it, um, I want my centre one to be right in the front. So just drag the other two below. And then select the two on the outside. I want to scale them down so that they can they look like they're standing a little bit behind. Edit, transform, scale. So I have both those layers selected and I'm just going to take them down 90% each. There you go. And then I'm going to take T caddy number two, drag it down, make that T caddy number one. Drag it underneath T caddy number two and then just shift it off to the left. And then I'm going to create T caddy number five and drag that one off to the right. I'm just going to place them next to each other so that I can select both of them. Edit, transform, scale, and we're going to make it. 90% again. And center them nicely. Perfect. Great. Now I'm going to start applying the different uh, patterns to this uh, packaging. So there I have my strawberry. I'm going to create the different colors now. So with your shape one selected, that is my strawberry. I'm going to drag it, duplicate it. You can double click on it to get your color or I like to go to shape, 
click on fill and then I can get my next color which is my lavender click off strawberry and call that lavender edit define your pattern lavender hex and go OK. Drag that one down. Next pattern, go to your fill. I'm going to make that my mint. So this will be mint hex. And again, go edit, define pattern, and call it mint hex or whatever you would like to call it. So as I go, I'm defining all my patterns. Uh, this one is going to be my basil hex. Click on your color and then we're going to drag it to create my last color. Click on your fill. So the last one I have is my blueberry. Whoops. There we go. Let's call that blueberry hex and edit. Define that pattern. Okay, so now I have all my hexagonal patterns saved. I can go back to my aluminium round caddy. I'm going to apply the different colors to my caddy. The, the most important thing to remember is that the smart layer that you've copied, they all relate to each other. So if I didn't go and do something very special to this layer, it would apply the same pattern to all the smart layers. I'll just show you for example, if I changed um, T caddy number one, which is the one on the far left, and I just double clicked on it, and then to change my pattern, double click on that um, pattern thumbnail, and if I change, these are all my patterns there. If I just clicked on the new pattern, I went okay, I saved that, close it, it would change it to all of them. So what we need to do is a very special um, instruction so that you can edit each smart layer individually and it doesn't affect any of the other smart layers. Hold down your control, click on your layer and you want to select new smart object via copy, select that. And then delete the one, which is the original, go yes. And I'm going to call this caddy one and go through all your layers and do exactly the same. So where you see your content, hold down control click and go new smart layer via object. So what will happen then is I can go and manipulate each one and this is caddy five. Too. So we can we can keep the center one obviously. So click on that. New smart object via copy. Delete the original. Yes. Call this caddy two. And last one caddy four. New smart object via copy. Delete the original. Yes. This caddy four, and there you go. So now, if I go to caddy one, double click on it, I can change my pattern. Double click, I'm going to change it to my lavender and go OK. And I want to change my image over here, so select Illustrator. I want my lavender, so select that. Command C, go back into Photoshop. Paste it, smart object. Make sure it lines up nicely. You can delete your old label, yes. Go Command Save. And when I close that, you'll see it's only changed my first one. So, so we can go through all of them. Uh, Cutting number two. Double click, double click on your pattern, change it to 
whatever pattern you're going to have next. I'm keeping it at 16, go OK. Go back into your Illustrator. This is my blueberry, so select your blueberry or whatever label you have. Come on, paste, go OK. Place it, drag it so it sits nicely. Delete your old label, yes. Save that, close it, and there's your next one. And so we go. So we'll go number four, double click on your caddy, double click on your color. We're going to make this um, our basil color. Okay. Go back into Illustrator, copy, back into Photoshop. Paste your new label as a smart object, and that way, if you paste as a smart object, you can always go back and use the same label on different artwork. Save, close that, and then we have our last one. Open up Illustrator. Copy, tab, caddy number five. Double click on caddy number five. Change your pattern, double click. This is our mint. Okay. Paste your new label. This is a smart object. And then drag it into place. Delete your old label. Make sure your new label is sitting nicely within the pattern. and save that and close. So there we have all our patterns and our labels on the same mock-up. The next thing we're gonna do is just apply the pattern um, into the background. Now, what we wanna do is make sure that these beautiful shadows that we have, drop shadows, on our packs show through. Um, so we're gonna place the pattern on top and multiply it. I'm gonna create a new layer. So don't be concerned how busy it looks initially. Select all. And I'm going to layer fill that. So new layer fill, pattern, and I'm going to use the pink. I'll just go OK. Um, get my watermelon. And I'm going to change that to 16 too. OK. In your blending mode, you want to make sure it multiplies. And that way, the beautiful drop shadows on the packs will show through. And what I want to do is create a mask so that the the pattern only falls outside of the packs. So I'm going to go through each tea caddy and select each tea caddy in every layer. So there's my center one. I'm going to select it by holding down command and just hovering over the thumbnail. You can close that one. Tea caddy number four. Click on that one, but hold down shift at the same time so that it adds that mask to the original one. TK number two, hold down shift and command, click on the third one. Oh, that was my center. TK number two, Decaddy number five. And finally, Decaddy number one. Hold on, shift. There we go. So I have all my packs selected. Go back up to your pattern fill right on top and then select your layer mask, vector mask to that. Click on that. You'll notice nothing happens. What we have to do is make sure that that is a smart layer. So convert to a smart layer, else you won't be able to apply that um, layer mask to it. Select. So what it's done is done the opposite to what we want. So we want to manipulate the layer mask. Hold down Option, click on your pattern for layer mask. You'll see it's black um, surrounds or with white on the inside. So to inverse that, hold down Command-I and it will inverse. Go back and there we have it. 
So we've multiplied it. It's maybe a little bit too intense, so you can drag down your opacity to whatever suits you. Maybe just going to go down to about a 20. Great. Awesome. Now the one thing I've noticed is that because I have um, copied the packs, there's no drop shadow um, falling um, behind each pack as they overlap. So I'm just going to add something there. I want a little bit of a shadow here, 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 and here. So I want a bit of a shadow over here falling onto my Caddy One. So go to Caddy One, open that up, and just right at the top, I'm going to add a new layer and call it Shadow. Select your T Caddy, holding down Command and just hovering over the T Caddy, the metal T Caddy. And then I'm going to grab my graduation tool. I'm just going to make it double click on it to change it. I want to make that a black. Okay. Okay. And then sort of start where your running line on the right edge starts. Hold down your shift and just drag your crosshairs across. Oh, it's giving me a lovely pink one. That's not what I want. Let's just make it that and then we can multiply it. There you go. So I get a, a shadow falling just behind and I multiplied it and I can just drag it down. Let's just make it 60. Great. And then I want to do the same on Caddy 2. Select it, add a new layer. Call it shadow. Get my graduation tool. Cross. Make sure it's multiply. And take that down. 60. Still a little bit intense, so I'm going to make that 40. And do the same to Caddy 4. Select key T Caddy. Add a new layer, give my graduation, multiply it, take it down to about 60. And then we can do it to our last one, TKD5. Add a new layer, call it shadow. Multiply it. Use my graduation tool. Fifty or sixty. Great. So there it looks a lot more realistic. Deselect. And I can save that, save as T Caddy Aluminium. Hexagonal. Save. Great, so there I have my hexagonal. The next one, uh, pattern we're going to create is our zigzag pattern. So you can go straight to your pattern new and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing um, using my layers but a new pattern. So select a new layer and you can click off your blueberry hexagonal, go to your patterns custom shape tool. This time we're looking for an arrow that points to the right. It looks like this. Use that. Click on your screen. We're going to make it 200 by 200 and go OK. Drag it into your uh, format. I'm going to call that straw berry. Just call it ZZ for zigzag. And then I'm going to transform and just turn it so that um, my arrow is pointing to the top, so I rotate 90%, um, 90 degrees, should I say, counterclockwise. There we go. So there I have my strawberry um, zigzag. I can define that pattern, so I go edit, define pattern, and go strawberry zigzag, and go OK. And so I can drag that same shape 
double click on it, change my color there by just pulling up my swatches. That's one way to do it. Uh, it's my lavender. And then add it. Define pattern, lavender zigzag. Go OK. Drag that one. So, in many ways to do it, I can click on it on my shape and then click on my fill at the top. And then our next one will be a mint and call that mint zigzag. Edit, define your pattern, mint zigzag. Drag it, switch that off, click on your, uh, on your shape. And the next one is our basil zigzag. Edit to find pattern. And our final one, click on that, click on your fill. Final one is our blueberry and go blueberry zigzag. Edit to find pattern and go OK. Now we're ready to apply it to our, um, our mock up. So I'm going to do a save as so that we can save our hexagonal and this will be called zigzag. Go OK. And very simply, we can go through all our layers now and very quickly change the pattern. So I'll start with the background just because it's right at the top. So you can double click there, double click on your pattern, change your pattern to your strawberry zigzag, go OK, save, and close that. And there I have my strawberry zigzag. So we can start in the center, double click, double click on your pattern and change it. Go OK, save, close, and there's your strawberry zigzag. Go to your next one, double click, double click, change it to your basil. OK, save, always remember to save or it won't reflect in your mock-up. And so we move through all our layers and very quickly able to change the pattern and change the color. If you get a five, double click. And the beauty of all of this, of course, is that these patterns are saved forever in your library. So you can always come back to them and use them in different jobs. So I love to play and create new patterns, even if it's not something specific that I'm going to be using because I know I can always come back to it and use it in a design. So there we have our zigzag pattern. So make sure you save that. And then the final pattern we're going to be doing is a dot pattern. So go back to your patterns, um, create a new layer, now to create a dot, I'm going to be using my guide. So go new guide. I want to get a, a perfect um, cross in the middle. So I want a vertical guide and I want it at 50% and go OK. And then view new guide and I want a horizontal guide at exactly the same, 50% and go OK. So it's right in the center. Go to your shape tools, get your round ellipse and, oops, wrong shape. Go to your ellipse tool and draw your shape. You can draw it from the center. Um, I'm going to be making this 80 by 80. Oh, perfectly positioned. But you, in the properties, you can actually position it. So you can make sure that it's perfectly centered. So that I know that my document is 200 by 200 and my width is 80 by 80. So then I know that um, half of my diagonal across is 40. And that's going to help me position this shape. So with your shape selected, hold down option and you can just drag another, um, whoops, it disappeared. You can just drag another shape and then I'm just going to position it in the corner here. So because I know it's 40, I know that that would be 160 and this would be minus 40. So it's a bit of maths to be able to work um, patterns, but uh, if you like maths and you like logic, you'll love this. So it's minus 40, minus 40 pixels, and then I can just drag my next one down. Uh, minus 40 pixels and 
60 pixels, that's my positioning. I've still got 80 pixels by 80 pixels and then dragging that one across. Whoops, duplicated it. One sixty pixels position, one sixty pixels position. So there I have my pattern. But what you'll notice is with dragging my different shapes, I've got different layers. I want all these shapes to be in one layer. So select the top one, select the bottom one. There should be five layers to create. Um, one, two, three, four, five. And you want to merge the, those shapes so they're all on one layer. So I'm going to call that my strawberry dots. And then uh, I'm going to define that pattern now. Edit, define pattern. Call it straw dots. And then drag that. Again, just go to my shape tool, click, and change it to lavender. <clears throat> Call it lavender dots. Go OK. Drag that down. Click on my color. And make it mint. Call that mint dots. Okay, take that one, drag it down. Click on your color and your layer. We're gonna make that basil. And that one. Get your colors. Now we haven't defined these patterns, so we'll have to come back and define them. So I've got, I just need to do my blueberry. There you go. Blueberry. So I'll just define these patterns now. Edit, define pattern, blueberry dot, and go OK. Basil, edit, define pattern, basil dot. I think we did our first one, so we don't need to do that. Edit. Define pattern, min dot. And finally, our lavender dot edit. Define pattern, lavender dot. There we go. So we can go to our packaging. We've got our zigzag saved. Um, so I'll do a save as and call this dot. And then again, start right from the top. And you can change your pattern. Double click. I'm going to change it to my pink dot. And go OK. And you can also play with the scale and the opacity and how it looks on the screen. So there we go. So I can make it a little bit darker. And go to your caddy center. Double click. Double click. Change it to your pink dots, go OK. Now you might want to just have a look at your label, how it sits with the dots. So it might, um, if I just save it and close it, you might want to move your label around to work better with your pattern. But I'll just leave it for now. That will be up to your individual pattern and the label that you apply. Double click, change that to basil, go OK, save, window. Close that up, double click, my blueberry dots, double click. One minute. And finally, tea caddy number one. And we can change that. Double click, double click, save, and close. So there we have our dots. And I'll show you quickly how we can change the color of the tins. So, as I mentioned, um, we can actually change, take the label off so that you see the pattern on the tin. So, I'm going to just open up my hexagonal one and show you the um, creating the silver tin. So, I'll go to the center one. Um, so there's our tea caddy um, and our label. So just by clicking off our label, you can see that the silver shows through. So you can create a version just by removing the label, white label, that shows your pattern 
on the silver. So that's one way to do it. You also notice in the same um, uh, layering, there's also a black label and a black caddy. So you can change that too, which looks quite striking. We'll just keep it as silver for now on this one. And T caddy one, we'll just remove the label. So you can see what your label looks like on silver. Um, I'll go back to my dots. So my dots one, I will show you how to change the actual color of the tin. If you go down, you'll see there's another little folder here where it says colored. So click on that, open it up, and you can switch off your tea caddy silver. So you can see it's green at the moment. So I can click on this, um, this uh, color manipulation layer, double click there, and you can change the color to um, whatever you like to match the, the label color. So I just played around with it and very easy to get some really lovely um, colors happening. So I'll just go uh, caddy by caddy, switch off the silver, switch on the color, and then double click on the color. And you can play with your lightness, your hue, which is really gonna give you your color, the saturation of the color. And just play around until you find what works. So this is purely for mock-up purposes, obviously. We'll go to our center, switch off our silver, put on our color, uh, double click on that color manipulation. And we'll go to a nice pink. So depending on what your brief is, you can make your packaging as fun and colorful as you like by just playing around with what you can achieve with what you receive in the, in the packs. Okay, and my last one. So I quite like the colored lid, so I'm gonna show my client some options. So they'll be able to see um, what it will look like. Oh, we've done that one already. So there's Caddy one. I'm looking for Caddy five. Switch on my colored, take off my silver, double click. I'm just gonna make it a a light mint, make it a bit more green, perfect. So there we go, come on save. So the options are endless, um, hopefully I've inspired you to create some nice new patterns and have some fun with how to create patterns, defining your pattern and using the same document and playing around with different shapes using the pattern tool. And, um, and I'd love to see what you create. Feel free to apply your patterns to clothing, to stationery, to magazine mockups, um, whatever takes your fancy. Um, looking forward to seeing your work. And that's all from Dex for today. Goodbye.